101, there are a couple disclaimers that I want to point out. I am specifically going to be talking about like more of the affordable pen range. And I'm also specifically going to be talking about more beginner knowledge, I think. Well, a quick introduction. Um, so what exactly is a fountain pen? It is something that uses the capillary force of a liquid in order to flow the ink out of the pen. What I mean by that is if you drop water on tissue paper, for example, you see like where it's wet and then it spreads out really quickly. That is capillary force. So you basically have water that spreads along specific fibers to flow the ink. Uh, and so that's really special because in order to utilize capillary forces, you basically need your ink to be really flowy. So uh, the ink in a gel pen is, is a gel uh, and, in an, and an ink in a, uh, a ballpoint pen is kind of this paste. Neither of those are going to work the same way as a fountain pen. And specifically, you need a very special type of ink, usually specified as fountain pen ink. Um, you don't wanna use just any ink, so you can't use things like India ink or anything like that, because um, it will clog up. One of the neat things I think about fountain pens is that what we call the nib and the reservoir are usually separate. I have this picture of a fountain pen here. This is, I think the Platinum 37, it's like 3000 something. Um, and it is a demonstrator pen, which is a term we use to describe pens like this that are completely clear um, because they're good at kind of demonstrating the inside of a fountain pen. So I've kind of labeled the really three main components of a fountain pen and I'll kind of come back to this. The metallic part at the very tip of the pen, that's called a nib and a reservoir is just where the ink goes. And in a fountain pen, the reservoir and the nib is usually completely separated. So if you have a regular pen, right? So if I break this apart, this is the ink part, right? And in a ballpoint pen, this is always together. Like you always get the nib and the ink uh, together. And so if you wanted, if you ran out of all of the ink in here, you have to go buy this entire thing. It basically just limits kind of the freedom that you have with a pen. For a fountain pen, the reservoir and the nib is separate, you really don't have that issue. You can tell this is my metallic nib up here. This reservoir here where the ink goes actually comes apart. So if I wanted ink, I don't have to get a new nib. I just get new ink. Okay, and the one last thing that I do want to mention is that historically fountain pens are a luxury item. For example, this pen that I have here on this picture, uh, this pen I think is about $215. So it is not cheap from like a regular person's standpoint, but this is a really fair price. If you just will search up fountain pen, um, you're probably going to get a lot of these kind of pens. Um, however, there's a lot of this push for cheaper, affordable fountain pens. I myself am pretty cheap. I'm a student. Um, I don't have a lot of money to shove on a fountain pen. And so I'm going to be focusing on specifically affordable fountain pens. Um, I think all of the pens that I recommend, usually they fall between like the 10 to $35 range um, is the range that I'm really going to stick to. So why would you want a fountain pen to begin with? Uh, so the really the biggest reason and the reason that I personally love them is because it is so extremely smooth to write with a fountain pen. Like I like to give this analogy where if you are writing with a ballpoint pen, for example, that's like using sunscreen on your skin and gel pen would be like the next step up and be kind of lotion. And if you write with a fountain pen, it's straight up oil on your skin. But yeah, so that is, I think, really the biggest one. Um, it is just so comfortable to write with. Uh, the second point is that there are a lot of freedom of, of colors that you can use. Um, so I mentioned earlier that the fountain pen nib and the reservoir aren't connected. Um, so you basically have the ability to put whatever kind of inks you want inside of your fountain pen, uh, which, you know, if you want to buy like a pretty blue pen and put bright yellow ink in it, you can totally do that. Like nobody is stopping you from saying, oh, you have to have this ink 
Another thing is um, they say that it will give you good handwriting. <laughs> um, and the reason for that is because there's a specific way you have to, to write when you have a fountain pen. It kind of teaches you how to control your wrist. Um, and so in the end, it helps you have good habit. So those are some of the advantages of having a fountain pen. There are definitely some downsides. The biggest downside, and I think the main reason why more people don't do fountain pens is because they're a lot more expensive than a regular pen. If you get a gel pen at, you know, your local art store or whatever, they're like, what, a dollar, two dollars. So it is a significantly higher expense. You know, if you're not like a really big fanatic about writing smoothly, then maybe that extra, what, seven to thirty dollars or whatever is something that you don't really want to spend. Uh, the second thing is, uh, they do require a little bit more maintenance. They are reusable. You use it for quite a long time. They're like your best friends. Uh, the last one, fountain pen inks actually require dry time. Because it doesn't have a thickening agent in the ink, it does have to dry like a regular ink. And because of that, um, if you're left-handed and you need to kind of move your hand over the ink, it might not be a good idea. Um, that being said, they do make extra fast drying inks for left-handed people. But this ink here is um, Noodler's uh, Black Swan with Australian Roses. And you can see, I swiped it like two, sec two, three seconds after I wrote it and you can see it smudge. Okay, now that we've kind of talked about some of the basic